my background, I grew up in Kenya. I grew up in a town called Embu. And in fact, my sister just landed yesterday. She's visiting with me for the next two weeks. Um, I grew up uh, and uh, went to school, primary school, high school in Kenya. I, I was a conventionally good, you know, I wouldn't say a good student, but I did well. You know, I could pass an exam and I did. And I imagined at the time being the thing that if you did well academically, you went and it did, which was you became, you know, you would have been a doctor, an engineer, um, maybe a pilot. Those were the things that were bouncing around. You know, there was a, I like to joke, but there was a form you were given and there were certain boxes. And if you're doing well, you know, but it was very much around an idea of prestige. And I went on and I studied to be, and uh, sort of studying to be a chemical engineer and uh, a software engineer. And I applied and got into university in, in Boston, not the UK one, but the one in, in America. And uh, I, I, I think it was the first time I started to encounter the possibility that you could do a number of things that were outside what you, the, the options that we'd been provided growing up, quite frankly. You know, it was, you could be an engineer, but there was also, you know, I, I, I took a, a module on Japanese literature and uh, there were a number of different areas of interest that I, I, I started I started to catch my eye. But anyway, eventually I, I did graduate uh, as a biochemist and I ended up doing some really interesting work in that space. But I was always very interested in understanding and solving problems, uh, understanding how different and complex systems, whether that's a body or whether that's different molecules and compounds, uh, whether that is uh, an, a natural uh, ecosystem and how that comes into uh, fit in together. And so once I left uh, the US and I went back to Kenya and I worked a little bit, it was the first time while I was in the US, I started also to encounter an idea of having a racialized identity. I grew up in Kenya and I wasn't socialized as a black person. I was Kenyan from Embu, but it was the first time I started to encounter uh, being treated and being perceived differently. And I really started to, ident to uh, identify that the way the world was received and the way the world would treat me was very much led by the kinds of uh, portrayals of it. You know, when someone asked me, so do you wear banana leaves uh, in Kenya? And this was someone in engin engineering course that, you know, we were very much, and uh, in fact, I was tutoring him on some of the work that we were doing, but some of the questions and perceptions he had seemed very stark. And while I laughed him off at the time, I've come to realize that they were, they were they, uh, really they were they were a tragic reflection of what they thought was happening on the continent and so I, I wanted to see how we could start to to confront that and address that and I was already working on a project to, to document the stories of my grandmother and others around uh, the African continent when I came across Kugali who as it turns out were very passionate about telling African arts and, and stories and creating a platform for African storytellers so it was really it was an opportune, uh, it was a very serendipitous moment when it came around that I had had an experience and a background in looking at and trying to solve very complex problems. And, and that is, that's at the heart of what we're doing, we're trying to do is trying to develop and create an entirely new practice, an entirely new creative visual industry to enable storytellers to come and uh, step into this space where even here in the UK and in, in other developed uh, nations and countries, being an artist is very hard. Being an artist that can make a, an ink, a, a living is very hard. So if you take that and then you lay on the uh, challenges that already exist across the African continent, it was going to be a much more complex challenge as well. But what we found is that there was a significant appetite. And once I came on board and I found a very passionate team that had already done some significant things, that already created uh, a very successful Kickstarter, I saw that this was a place that I could not only um, carry on with the work I wanted to do with uh, understanding and recording the stories of my own people, but also where I could really lend the expertise and the skills and the passion that I had towards something that could have a really significant impact around the world and to a lot of people who, like me, didn't realize that they could have been artists, that they could have performed, they could have pursued creativity as not only something truly fulfilling, but also as a very valid and important um, career path uh, in their lives. And that's how I, I came to be talking to you today as the CEO of Kugali. Second question, uh, what have been some of Kugali's most successful projects so far? 
Well, I think possibly an easy quest answer to that might be, or maybe an expected answer to that might be Iwaju, and I can I can talk about that. Uh, but actually, for me, Kugali's most successful project so far has been that we were able to create an opportunity for artists from across the African continent. There are a, lo a number of people within our team, and we've, we've seen considerable growth in our organization today. I think just this year, maybe we've had close to 10 new hires that happened. Many of those people a few years ago never imagined that they would be able to be making a living being artists, leave alone imagine that they would be they would have credits on a show like Kiwaju. But for me, one of the most uh, successful story for us is being able to find um, someone who had been working as a graphic artist in, in Kenya. And th th this is but one of the examples. And this is someone who had uh, wanted to, like me, went and trained to be an engineer or got admitted to go and do an engineering program, but uh, actually went and changed when they got to university, didn't tell their parents. And uh, when they went to uni, they switched and started doing graphic design. And when their parents find out, they, they were furious. They refused to pay their university fees. And uh, they really went and pled their case because what had happened is they told their friend, really, I've gotten into engineering, but what I really want to do is I want to make art, but no one's going to tell their parent that. Um, and so they, 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 their friend told them, you know what? You can go and change when you get to uni, which they did. And then when their parent found out, they really pleaded and, they, and their mother told them, fortunately, they were in a position where they could. If this is something you really want to do, we'll support you. Through what we will be now launching in the next year, which is uh, something I'm very excited about, which is Kugali Academy is an art school that we're developing within Kugali. We're able to train them and to improve their craft and their practice. And eventually, we attach them onto the Iwaju project. So this is someone who had to, well, we wouldn't say lie, but, you know, uh, very craftily get into learning to, to do this uh, university program and now has credits on the, our, our world's first collaboration with Walt Disney Animation. So that for me is the biggest success we've had where we've been able to achieve the thing that we set out to do, which is make it possible for people from the African continent to come and step into becoming artists and to now be able to be making a living. And now they're one of the best uh, artists that we have and hopefully one of the very first ones. So that for me is uh, a truly uh, proud moment. Finally, for me, uh, what impact do you hope to leave on the world by telling these stories? I think the, the first impact I want to have is, for me, is at home. In, you know, I want my niece when she grows up. Uh, today, when she, you know, if they're watching anything on, on, on the TV, that content will predominantly still be white characters today. That's sad for me. It's sad that you can't see yourself in the world. You can't, and wh whether that's in content around what exists today or content that is about the future, where are we in that future? Where am I? Where will she be? And to be able to see a positive representation of that in ourselves, of our stories, a sense of pride in who we are and what we can do and what we can achieve. Um, that's the, one of the first things I want to, to see start to shift and change. I want the world to know us and I want us to get to know, you know, to share that and define our own narratives and stories because in that is where we get a sense of pride and in that is also where we start to shift some of the, the prejudices that have that still today leads to a very um, hostile and oppressive world that people of color and people of African descent encounter uh, around the world. We are going to create narratives that haven't been seen. So I'm excited for what the African uh, art scene and industry and the artists can bring to the rest of the world. And I think the world can be made more colorful and richer and exciting and uh, the worlds we're going to imagine. I'm excited to see how the global um, film and art scene are going to be impacted and changed when we bring our voices and our art and our colors to it.